Hello crafty friends, welcome to the third in our white paper scrap series. Today I'm going to be using again some of my fairly large scraps I think. And I'm going to choose the best side for the front. And again I'm going to tape together my scraps just to make them easier to handle. Yesterday I used my dot markers to make dotty papers. Today I'm going to use my mild liner brush pens from Zebra to make stripes. So I've got red, vermilion gold, green, blue, smoke blue and violet. And all I'm going to do is draw lines from one end to the other. It doesn't have to be particularly straight doesn't matter if they touch I am going for the hand drawn look So I can take the washi tape off the back. I don't need them stuck together anymore. That was just for ease. So I've got three nice big bits of stripy paper. I've also got three that I did earlier when I was experimenting. As I've done in the previous videos in this series, I'm going to create a card for you on camera and then do some off camera and show you those at the end, just so the video doesn't end up being hours and hours long. So I really fancied, after thinking about it, cutting some bright stripy stitched banner shapes from my papers. So that's what I'm gonna do with all my papers, but we'll just stick with this one for now. And I'm gonna stick this down on my card blank, which is four by five and three quarter inches approximately and that's going to sit nicely on the side there and I've got these dies which I bought a while ago because there's a pencil and a palette and then we've got a set square and a protractor some books or file folders a pair of compasses and a globe which I thought I would use lots and I haven't really well I haven't at all used them yet so I'm going to use these today and I'm thinking to help them stand out and to give them a bit of sparkle, I'm going to use this gold glitter paper to cut them. I'm going to add a shim. This is another great way to use up paper scraps, especially if the paper's a bit battered or inky and you don't think you're ever going to be able to use it on a card. I keep those bits for shims. It just helps the die cutting machine cut through those tougher bits of cardstock and paper. I'm going to cut out of a white scrap another palette because I want to put some colour in the welds in my palette. I'm going to stick this down to a piece of white cardstock and cut it out with my detail scissors. I'm going to not put card underneath this hole because that's the thumb hole for the palette. I'm going to take these four little dots that I cut out earlier, the ones from the welds, put them on the back of a sticky note when I can pick them up. This just holds them still because I'm going to colour them now and I'm using some of the colours that I used in the stripes and I'm going in a bit heavier doing a couple of coats of pen just so they stand out nicely. Now I can dip them in a bit of glue and pop them in their wells. So now my gold glittery palette has some paint in it. And now for my gold glittery pencil. Again I've cut another pencil from white and I'm colouring it red. I think I'll give it a blue eraser. Whoops, I'll try and give it a blue eraser. 
I'm not going to be able to colour the little dot that represents the tip of the pencil, the colour of the lead. So I will colour the white piece of paper that I'm going to stick this down to, or the gold one down to rather. And when I find what I've done with the gold one, there it is. So we'll just pop out all the bits that we don't want. So I'll pop a little bit of glue on the mat here to get my gold pencil sticky. Pop that on there. So that little bit of purple is peeking through that little hole. I'm going to colour the wooden part of the pencil brown. Put some glue on that, stick it in there. And then I'm going to dip the eraser into the glue and stick that in there. Now I can take the little red bits, add some glue and put them in their holes. And now that's ready to cut out. For my sentiment, I've chosen a stamp that says, so proud of you. And I'm going to ink it up using Catherine Pooler Cove Blue because it's a little bit darker but similar to the smoky blue that I used on the stripy paper. So it's not black, it's just a little bit different from my usual black. I'll cut that out by hand and I'm thinking something like that. that can go on there like that so it's actually sitting in the middle this way but I do need to give it a bit of support at this end and I think it probably needs a couple of bits of foam tape I could layer up some bits of card I think this will do the job I will put a sliver of card at the other end though because that needs a bit of support too, I think. And because I've got them to hand, I'm gonna use these little glittery dots that came out of the palette. There are a couple more somewhere, and when I find them, I'll add them on. Right, I think that's this card finished. Um, Pleased with the way it turned out, I do like that stripy banner and the gold glitter and all the colour on the die cuts. Okay, I shall toddle off and make some more cards with my stripy backgrounds and be back in just a second to show you how they ended up. Right, I'm back with 10 more cards for you. So this was the one that I made on camera. I did take a different tack with the ones that I made off camera in that I didn't use gold glitter cardstock, I used gold foil cardstock because when cutting intricate dies, sometimes the gold glitter cardstock doesn't cut particularly well. It takes forever to poke out the little bits and bobs. So I decided to go with gold foiled cardstock. So this is card number one and I used one of my doily dies to cut out this gold foil doily and stuck it on my banner which I put on the right hand side instead of the left hand side just for a change. I then added a stitched banner in white to break up that gold, added a sentiment on top, I used the same sentiment set for all of these cards and I stamped them all in cove blue again. And then I added some gold foil circles from my pot of circles. For this one, I decided to put the banner in the middle, but I didn't want it going all the way down here and slicing the whole card in half. I decided to trim it down a bit and just have it coming to about a third of the way up. Used another doily, used this banner die, and again added some circles. Here I used another partial banner coming in from the side, another doily die, this banner again and more circles. I showed all these cards to my daughter a little while ago and she said they've got a real beachy vibe and I think that's where I was going with it. The stripes are kind of like deck chair stripes and the gold circles are kind of like the sun so I think I uh, subconsciously went for a beachy vibe. This one I decided to do in landscape and have the whole banner on and it's exactly the same with the gold foil doily 
the stitched banner and circles. After doing a number of cards with that long banner die, I decided to change it up and use this Sizzix tag die. But I still use the gold foil doily shapes. And I broke out these banner dies. Again, these were a fairly recent purchase, but I'd not got around to using them yet. So I thought I'd use them on these cards. And they cut out these banners. You get a trim around the outside and then the inlay bits. And I just added a sentiment on top of that. There's quite a lot of gold here, so I didn't add any extra circles to this one. I didn't think it needed it. For this one, instead of putting the whole tag on again, I decided to put a partial tag coming from the bottom. So I've got lots of nice white space up here. Another one of these dies, another sentiment, and I did add some circles as well. Slightly different recipe for this one. I've got the tag coming in from the top and I've got three splat die cuts to create a visual triangle. In the middle of that, I've got another banner die and a let's celebrate sentiment. And lots of white space down here to keep it clean and simple. Next, I went landscape again and had two tags this time, but partial tags, a larger bit here and a smaller bit here. And on this bit, I added this lovely scribbly Sizzix die cut and one of these banners with a many thanks on. No circles again, because I thought there was enough gold going on with this heart. You could just have this down here like this and omit this, but I quite like having that over that side to get that diagonal going. Here's another landscape one and I used these whimsical dotty circle dies to cut out some gold circles and cluster them here and make this the focal point with the banner and the sentiment. And again, no extra circles because there's plenty, I think, going on. This one's got a bit of a mistake on it because when I put it together, I did it this way up, but actually it's a tenfold card. It's meant to go that way up. So I need to stamp another congratulations and just stick it over the top. So it's uh, the right way up on the card. Alternatively, I could just slice the card in half and use it as a panel on another card. But let's look at it this way. So again, two partial tags a larger one here and a smaller one here and this I made into my focal point with uh, I think this is a dream catcher die that I got years ago from the front of a craft magazine and a banner and a sentiment the wrong way up and some circles to bring in a bit of bounce and flow and energy so there we have 11 cards made using my stripy backgrounds I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some more ideas of things to do with your white paper scraps. Do let me know in the comments if you've got any additional ideas for white paper scrap usage. It's always good to gather as many ideas as possible. And do come back tomorrow for the next in our white paper scraps video series. Right, thanks for joining me. Bye for now.